happens. Yay, we're live. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, all of you. To the masses, John Lavinia here. <clears throat> Not in uniform today, still in gym clothes and don't give a damn, but uh, good to see you. Um, I've got a, I think, an exciting topic for today. Hey, before we get into that, yesterday we did have Books for Britain, and I am going to get that, uh, that recording posted. I know um, uh, we had some technical issues with Zoom. So our awesome host, Mandy, over in the UK had to use her own Zoom account, and we weren't able to get it posted yet. So anyway, I've got the recording and I'll get that posted. Uh, they've been reading Bob Proctor's uh, You Were Born Rich, which we're about to start reading this week. In fact, uh, you should have started already. So uh, grab, you, grab yourself a copy of that. If you're a member here, I gave you a link to download a free PDF, as well as the audio book, which sounds like crap like it was really bad recording <laughs> bad recording but um <laughs> good content nonetheless so uh dig into the uh the intro the preface the forward the first and second chapter we're going to review that on monday so um here's something that i was reviewing while in in the gym today and i think it's going to be something that uh that is definitely worth uh, reminding ourselves about and sharing with you here today I was listening to the audiobook of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill for the 10 friggin billionth time. Uh, you know, there's there's a few there's a few books that I put in my in my uh, book application here on the phone. And uh, of course, you can have printed books. You can also have, you know, audio books. That's different than the Kindle application, by the way. This is the Apple Books, you know, app or whatever, which I've never bought a book on Apple Books. But I guess you could. Um, but one thing that I can do is synchronize my phone with, you know, my library uh, here on my Mac, and I can choose which which books or audiobooks to to synchronize with the phone. In other words, I want them portable with me. And one that I've never not had synchronized. In other words, it's always on the phone. Is Think and Grow Rich, and if I'm in. Uh, situation, walking down the street, going to the gym, doing whatever, where I'm thinking, you know what, I need some material. I need some material because you know what, I'm going to go host a mastermind session here with some people here. And and uh, I can use some reminders. This is a trick, by the way, you guys, if you're ever looking for content, okay, there's this thing which I call the transfer of cognition, which is, you know, when you have a cognition, an aha moment, a discovery, some breakthrough, right? Uh, then it's it's easier, it's even automatic to then just go ahead and convey that you know look what I discovered wow this is freaking awesome hey eh? right so so I I do this all the time before I I do any sort of public speaking not just you know online but you know in, uh, events I've spoken at and whatever um, and Think and Grow Rich is one of those books where I I'm guaranteed to get something some cognition some reminder some inspiration that I can then transfer to my audience. So I'm going to do that right now. That's what just happened. You, you're witnessing it right here. So here I was in the gym, pumping iron and listening to Think and Grow Rich on audiobook. And it just so happened that wherever I left off before was right at the end of a chapter and it started the next chapter and it was the chapter on persistence. I was like, man, persistence. Isn't that, isn't that been kind of beaten to death? You know, haven't we been told to be persistent again and again? In other words, people persistently tell us to be persistent. These people who talk about such things, right? And yet, am I fulfilling, am I in a state of impeccable integrity to the concepts that I say are uplifting, enlightening, and, and that I'm appreciating hearing again and again? Am I, have I actually had integrity to that? And quite often the answer is no, right? Which is why I wrote a whole book about it. It's because, well, here's here's how I succeed and here's how I uh, miss the mark, right? And, and it all comes down to what degree I am actually applying this stuff. <clears throat> now, look, there's a lot of people, as we've already discovered, there's a lot of people who, who give lip service. Some of the lip service is pretty eloquent too. I mean, it sounds good, yeah. Nice. I suppose you could be um, 
you know, a politician or, you know, a pitch man or something. And, you know, you can speak in rhetoric, but <laughs> rhetoric, like where the rubber meets the road, it doesn't really serve us. Like, like as, as entrepreneurs, as self-determined people, as people who are, who are seeking to, to be, do, and have more of, of, you know, what we can actually accomplish here, you know, just, just a uh, lip service alone is not, I mean, it's, it's better than, than I suppose, just filling your mind with negativity. Sure. That's, that's nice. Okay. I mean, that, that would be, I guess the ultimate booby prize is if you just, you know, didn't study, didn't, uh, you know, give yourself opportunities for growth. Right. And you just, you just, you know, went into agreement with whatever narrative is coming your way, you know, whether you like it or not. So no, that's definitely a step forward, right. Which is to at least, engage in the lip service but <laughs> but does it bear fruit and so and so what i wanted to to remind you all of today and which i was reminded of today is how to actually develop persistence like how to do it like for real not lip service like how to really become persistent because one of the things that napoleon hill said in fact i highlighted this is the last time we went through this this book in our book study group Right, we covered each chapter. We spent one week on every chapter. We spent 15 weeks on one book, and it was worth it. Okay, but I, I got a few highlights here, and one of them here in the chapter on persistence <clears throat> is a rather extensive highlight. It is long. Okay, so I'll start, and then we're going to end off with the you know with the uh, the actual instructions. But it says here, verily, like very true, very truly. Okay. If one has persistence, one can get along very well without many other qualities. So right there, that should be a clue. Okay. That, that if you're persistent, I mean, look, my dog is persistent. I want the, I want the treat. 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 He's going to get the treat. He's going to get it. Does he have many other qualities? No, but he's got that. The only break, quote, break anyone can afford to rely upon is a self-made break. These come through the application of persistence. The starting point is definiteness of purpose. So what he's saying here is that we are, as self-determined beings, we already have the tools, the mechanics necessary to create these lucky breaks. If we have integrity to one of the things he told us to do, which is to come up with a definite purpose, definite desire, definite plans, right? Definiteness is the answer here, <clears throat> but we can't be, we can't be vague about that or, or we're actually not even using our power, right? I mean, how can you expect to, to create your own breaks if you're not even committed to them? So definiteness of purpose comes into play. He goes on, examine the first hundred people you meet. This is an interesting opportunity. Ask them what they want most in life. And 98 of them will not be able to tell you. If you press them for an answer, some will say security. Many will say money. A few will say happiness. Others will say fame and power. And still others will say social recognition, ease and living ability to sing, dance, or write. But none of them will be... <laughs> but none of them will be able to define these terms. Define, definite. You see the, the word here, define, definite. <clears throat> none of them will be able to, to define these terms or give the slightest indication of a plan by which they hope to attain these vaguely expressed wishes. Riches do not respond. Uh, riches do not respond to wishes. They respond only to definite plans backed by definite desires through constant persistence. So here we go, my friends, how to develop persistence. There are four simple steps which lead to the habit of persistence. So you see here, it's not, it's not enough just to be persistent. It's a habitual persistence. So in other words, persistently persistent without even thinking about it. The habit of persistence. They call for no great amount of intelligence. All right, so everybody here's off the hook. No particular amount of education. <laughs> and but little time or effort. The necessary steps are, number one, a definite purpose backed by burning desire for its fulfillment. 
So we kind of already covered that without the purpose. Well, what's it all for, right? Number two, a definite plan expressed in continuous action. <clears throat> so what is your plan? We'll, we'll spend a little bit more time on these, okay? But what is your plan to fulfill this purpose? I used to resent people saying, well, what's your plan? Because I didn't have one. Hmm. Number three, a mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences, including negative suggestions of relatives, friends, and acquaintances, and mass friggin' media, which is there to destroy you in case you are vague on that. Let me help you be unvague. This is huge, guys, huge. All negative and discouraging influences. Now, when this was written, keep in mind, this was the follow-up to Napoleon Hill's Laws of Success, which was like a four-volume series and took the world by storm, okay? But this is coming out towards the tail end of the, the Great Depression. 1937, this book was published, and it was basically a summation of the laws of success, which people desperately needed. <clears throat> Number four, finally, a friendly alliance with one or more persons who will encourage one to follow through with both plan and purpose. All right, so plan and purpose, My, mind closed tightly against negative influences and friendly alliance, you need allies he talks about this in a later chapter on the power that comes from a mastermind alliance. These are people who are sympathetic with your purposes. These are people who will encourage one to follow through with both plan and purpose. So, so look at the equation here. If you want to build this like a building, you've got purpose at the foundation. You've got plan, we could say, is a, a bunch of bricks right? Erecting the walls. And then you've got, you've got a mind closed tightly. In this case, we could say this would be the roof where we are now closing off the elements that come willy nilly into your structure. Okay. And then we have your army who is also uh, guarding the structure with machinery and nukes and whatever. So you're not alone with this. Don't go it alone. This is the, the reminder that I'm, I'm getting from this here. And he mentions the power of the mastermind at several times in this chapter. And, and of course the chapter that's dedicated to it fully, but, <clears throat> but the idea that you could persist or develop the habit of persistence all on your own while not giving attention, consistent attention, persistent attention to your purpose and the development of plans, well, there's, there's where your lip service comes in. There it is, right? But remember, riches do not respond to wishes. So let's dig into this here. <coughs> purpose. So there's a reason you're showing up there's definiteness of desire built into that purpose. And he does say in this, in this chapter, he says, go back to chapter two and follow the, the exact steps I gave you to create that goal statement. Okay. In fact, your, your persistence will be revealed in how fervently you, you actually do that. Right. Or if you just kind of forget about it or whatever, that's an indicator. That's an indicator. All right. So what do we have to do first and foremost is we have to know where we're going. We have to know where we're going. We have to have our attention on purpose to the point where it's a knowingness. It's a, it's a certainty. It's a, um, it's who we we've actually become. It's not just what we do, but it's actually who we've become. Remember, the habit of persistence suggests that you don't even have to think about it anymore. I don't have to make the effort to be persistent. I just am persistent. I'm not going to try to be persistent. I am now. I am not now going to do persistence. I just am persistent. You see the difference there? Major difference. Okay. None of that happens without definiteness of purpose. So we've got to get really clear and remind ourselves and have reminders like we talked about last week, dream board or <coughs> goal card and 
auto-suggestive uh, statements I've got also on this device and synchronized on this device that I'm talking to you on now, I've got a note, which is part of the notes program, it's part of the operating system. And the title of the note is auto-suggestion. And upon it is written my goal statement and several uh, affirmative uh, statements as reminders for me. And at any time throughout the day, I can grab any device, open the notes application, go to the note called auto suggestion and read it. <clears throat> In this book, there's a whole chapter on auto suggestion, which is what we tell ourselves about ourselves all day long. Okay, that's auto suggestion. And, uh, and Napoleon Hill reveals that that one principle is the keystone in the entire Think and Grow Rich philosophy, that all other, all other um, uh, precepts and, and lessons in the book are there to serve that one, auto-suggestion. So persistence, while it's a standalone uh, principle, okay, or precept, uh, it serves auto-suggestion. Now you gotta read the whole book to, to get this whole puzzle together, okay? but i'm giving you some of the clues right now <laughs> okay so persistently what persistently putting our attention on the the goal the definite plans and purpose right but doing that in a way um where we're, we're actually in conversation with ourselves consistently have you given that lip service do you have a goal statement written are you applying the principle of auto suggestion and are you doing it persistently? <clears throat> if not, then, then part two doesn't matter. Definite plans, definite plan. Okay, so definite plans. Now, you wrote a whole chapter on organized planning and revealed that, you know, he doesn't have a crystal ball either. Do you know that Napoleon Hill <clears throat> had a rough life? <laughs> Which, when I think about it, uh, it's like, all right, well, why am I even reading this guy's book? I mean, he, he wasn't, uh, you know, he, he was successful, but my goodness, did he go through hell with a bunch of stuff. And a lot of it was his own, his own choices. Like he could have, he could have made choices. Well, and just checking out his autobiography or, or his biography, uh, I, I'm thinking, well, why did you do that? Why, why didn't you, why didn't you, you know, take the advantages that were being given to you? and stuff like that. He chose the hard path multiple times in his life, and he persisted through them. So, I mean, that's, <clears throat> that's got value, but at the same time, you know, his, his definite plans weren't so definite, and they had to change again and again. So this is, I think, a, a sticking point for a lot of people, where they think, all right, I'm going to fulfill these purposes, I'm going to reach these goals, and I'm going to do it by these methods. And, and uh, while I don't have a crystal ball, I, uh, I've, you see, I've invested myself into these methods. I bought the course and I signed up for the program and I did the thing and, uh, and I'll continue to do the thing because this is the way, this is the way for me to fulfill <clears throat> these purposes and, and these, achieve these goals. Okay. Again, that's infinitely better than then being vague and you know having no plan as the saying goes you, if you fail to plan you're planning to fail i think ben franklin gave us that one but but do you do you uh, know all the drama that's going to befall you on the on the path to reaching these goals you don't so plans can be optimized but only when we're persistently executing them, only when we're moving, we can't steer a parked car, right? So, so we've got to make a decision and this is how we shall accomplish such and such purpose, right? So we make a decision and then we start moving our feet without hesitation. And we do that consistently and persistently to the point where now we've got something worth optimizing. Now we have a result, good or bad, we can look and statistics and, you know, here's this or that result, and we can assess and evaluate and adjust. We can't do any of that if, if we're just winging it. And so much of my life, I've, I've just had the tendency to wing it because hey, I, don't, I don't have a plan for this, which is why I would be 
resistant or in some cases even resentful if someone asked me about, you know, what's my plan to accomplish this or that. Hmm. Now, the book we just finished reading uh, in our book study group, um, you know, included the, the whole chapter on um, Christopher Columbus and his decided heart and seeing the new world and, and all this and going with, with faith. Now, one of the things that uh, Napoleon Hill talked about in Thinking Grow Rich is that persistence is, is closely uh, commingled with faith, that if you didn't have faith, you wouldn't persist. Did Columbus have a plan, <clears throat> right? Or any of these people that you could say are visionaries, <clears throat> could we see at the outset or before the goal was accomplished, before the purpose was fulfilled, could we see that, ah, yeah, there was the plan. They see a lot of times we can't see it. At least I'll speak for myself. A lot of times I can't see it. A lot of times things are occluded. And, and if, if I find that things are occluded in my own life, right, then, then I'm just going to have to actually spend a little bit of time on this. Here's one thing you can do. No matter what kind of business you're engaged in, no matter what sort of uh, purposes you're here to fulfill, uh, you can actually create something <coughs> very easy to do just with a piece of paper and a pen, and you can call it a battle plan. Not a plan for the whole war, okay, but just a plan for the, the battle, all right? <laughs> and excuse me, and the battle we could say is today's events. So today's events, what will I do? Well, I'm going to do this and do that and do that. And you actually write this stuff down. And now that is a definite plan, which could be a small piece of a, of a larger plan. And you get into the persistent act of doing this sort of thing. We're actually planning your time and planning your activities. And then you can get into planning weeks which I think is much more proactive, right? Rather than just daily, you know, crisis management or whatever, right? Now we're being a bit proactive, we're looking ahead, right? And you can get into planning, you know, months or quarters or years, right? So, so this, this comes on a gradient, like he says in this, in this chapter, we're not gonna reread the whole chapter today, okay? But like he said in this chapter, is that you could start small, he gave the example of, of waking up out of a nightmare, right? You start by wiggling your finger and then your hand and then your arm and then your other arm. And then, you know, suddenly you, you regain control of, you know, your whole body, right? But it happened on a gradient, right? It wasn't just like completely off, completely on. So we can develop persistence on this gradient. We could start with small plans, which again are infinitely better than, than no plans. And now you don't have to be resistant or resentful or, 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 self-deprecating about it because, you know, you ne'er do well, you, you just never make plans. No, you can go ahead and you could start small with a little battle plan. It could be for this afternoon. It could be for the next 48 hours, whatever, wherever on that gradient you are. So you can start. And then again, you'll be infinitely further than having not started. <laughs> so definite plans. Don't worry about having all the details optimization will will occur adjustments will occur but not if you're not moving can't steer a parked car so we got definite purpose we got definite plans the number three as you recall was a mind closed tightly we're going to go ahead and build that roof okay i don't care how nice your your foundation and your walls are if there's no roof all kinds of crap is getting you know what i just uh, walked to the diner with my daughter took her to breakfast this morning and uh, and we were walking out of our uh, the side entrance here, and uh, there was I said, look at all this crap on the ground. See, we got these big, beautiful trees, uh, southern live oaks to be exact, and they they crap all over everything. I mean, it's leaves and twigs and 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 stuff, and and um, and I just raked it. I just raked it up, and and there it is again. Right? Not to mention the squirrels. The squirrels, they're, they're tearing the crap out of everything. I actually had, I actually had a, a piece of a squirrel nest, like leaves and sticks and stuff, came crashing down <laughs> while I was in the driveway. Not today. It happened a couple of weeks ago. So they're, they're all tearing ass up there, and it's like squirrel wonderland. Okay, so, so I get to be the beneficiary of all this crap that falls out of the trees. And I asked the neighbor, because we're new here, I said, you know, when did these things, you know, when is autumn over? 
is autumn ever over here? He's like, no, no, it's all year. Like these, these trees drop stuff all year. I'm like, okay, okay, got it. So, all right, I signed up for that. I didn't know I did, but I bought that deal. All right, now what if I had no roof? And again, this might sound silly, but you know, there, there's no roof on the, on the structure, right? Well, all this crap is gonna go in without any effort on your part. And it's gonna fill up your building with stuff that's gonna ultimately, you're not even gonna be able to walk. And it's like, I can't get anywhere over here. It'll look like my daughter's bedroom. But without any effort on her part, okay? My daughter's bedroom is, is like a minefield, okay? It's, it's a very interesting place. Uh, the point is that, that if we're to create order, and all success is orderly, okay? But if we're to create order in our life, in our results, in our business endeavors, our uh, various enterprises, our relationships, well, if we're to do that, well, well then that's got to be a deliberate effort. One of the thing that uh, one of the things that Hill talked about was that, uh, to paraphrase, it doesn't require any effort to to grow weeds, and to experience you know poverty consciousness. I mean, that's automatic, right? Any idiot, in fact, every idiot does that. Every one of them, with effortless, effortless. But to develop this money mindset, this prosperity consciousness requires work. We call that thinking and a mind closed tightly to negative influences, negative, discouraging, right? All that is necessary. It's enumerated. Number three, as you just saw, number three, that has to be there. We have to protect ourselves. We have to keep order. If we intend to experience order outwardly, we must experience order inwardly. The internal dialogue, back to the, the keystone of the entire philosophy, right? Autosuggestion. The, the internal dialogue, what we tell ourselves about ourselves all day long must be kept in order. If you are allowing in discouraging ideas, things that are counter to your intention, things that suggest to you that you can't, that you're not able, that you're not qualified, and whatever, fill in the story here, whatever the story is, okay? And some of these suggestions come from obvious sources, right? Mass media and such. Some of these come from subtle sources. Some of them come covertly through ignorant but well-meaning friends, family, and neighbors, whatever, right? I mean, who hasn't experienced this? Or in hindsight, who can't look back and say, you know what? That kind of affected me, what that person said. And you know what? I've been making some non-optimal decisions ever since that. Let me go ahead and, and reassess. Let me reassess all this. Whose life am I living here? Who am I going into agreement with? Right? But you see, these, these are all questions and considerations that, that can bring an orderly state to your mind, is that when, you, you've got your, <clears throat> when you've got your, your attention uh, fixed by choice on your own self-determined purposes and plans, well, you know, we kind of we block out uh, a lot of that, the, the room for those weeds to grow. In fact, I can see this literally. I, I was looking at um, uh, my neighbor's lawn. They have a beautiful lawn with this uh, St. Augustine grass, okay? Again, I'm still learning my way around Florida, you know, foliage and, and what have you. <clears throat> I'm used to the desert, right? I know the desert. Well, this is Florida. Okay, great. And so they've got this St. Augustine grass. And I was uh, studying on what kinds of grass and how they behave and whatever. Well, it turns out this St. Augustine grass it grows and it has these shoots that go out and it go and it roots over there, roots over there. And it becomes like this thick. And I mean, thick, I mean, the grass, like, it's like huge, like robust grass. And anyway, when you do it right, apparently the people, they do the sod and they get it all nice and fertilized. And anyway, once this stuff takes root, not only is it never coming out, but nothing else can grow there. Crabgrass, clover, they can all take a hike because St. Augustine is in control. And I'm like, whoa, that's the grass, right? That's the stuff, right? Here's the definite plan and the purpose. Here's the, you know, the, the, the persistent, you know, thick, deep, strong, right? Roots and shoots and everything else, right? And good luck trying to get in on that deal, right? St. Augustine's in control. That's an orderly state. 
a desirable one if you like a, a nice looking lawn too okay but you get that we can we can grow that same sort of thing in our mind right there's no room for the negativity i'm full already i'm growing the grass okay which leads us to the fourth item which is the alliance the mastermind the you know the people who are sympathetic with your purposes one or more people allies right who doesn't need allies <clears throat> i want you to think about that the, back to the grass example <clears throat> it wasn't one piece of grass or one root right it was this guy and this guy and that one and that one and that one and they're all getting together and they're all doing the thing and we all agree this is the thing that we're doing and uh and that's it this is our club our club our purposes our plans and uh and woe to you who try to impinge upon that now that sounds exclusionary and i know we're in the age of political correctness and tolerance and everything well a lot of people give it lip service and the most intolerant people i've met keep talking about tolerance so that's an interesting dichotomy but um but here is the definite plans to fulfill a definite purpose as determined by the individual with vision and <coughs> the alliances the allies that will reinforce and uh and strengthen and validate so not only are we uh having you know the roof on our structure <coughs> excuse me we're also having that army posted around it as security guards right that we can now flourish and prosper uh without um without trying to, to do it all yourself i mean you know you've got I mean, you could run around, you can picture running around the building, right? Defending from the east, defending the west, right? But you can't be east and west and north and south. You can't be all places at all times, right? Uh, also, it gets pretty lonely if if you're attempting to be, you know, everything, not only in your own life, but but everything in the lives of others as well. I know we've got a lot of people, obviously parents and, and grandparents and, and, of course, brothers, sisters, members of the community, uh and and uh, business leaders here and and people who have employees and subordinates and assistants and <clears throat> look you can't be all things to all people all the time and sometimes you need allies and uh, again the idea of persistence is what we're talking about here and how to develop it right well if you can and, and everyone here has i mean if you're in this group you've got allies around you but you can you can recognize that and you can form alliances for specific purposes remember we talked about a battle plan okay so so you can have people who are involved in this aspect and other people who are involved in this aspect you can have multiple allies and it's a good thing to have okay and this opens doors this opens doors that wouldn't have been opened otherwise had you attempted to, to go all alone now i happen to know in fact i see lindsay's here with us live right now so lindsay has a friendly alliance with several other people who are engaged in the same kind of business activities that she's engaged in okay so so what does that do that that empowers not only lindsay but each individual involved in those activities because what just like that grass that grows together we agree we agree here is the purpose and the purpose is to dominate this field and we will lay down roots and we will put out shoots and we will be thick and lush and, and whatever right and, and so that and so that right there i mean that that's so empowering I and mean, who doesn't like to be a part of a team i saw last night i saw a movie believe it or not i went to a theater yes that that happened that happened it's been like probably two years and i went to see tom cruise maverick top gun baby woo testosterone movie baby yeah it was awesome anyway one part in the movie and i won't ruin it for you but one part in the movie uh a group of of these these fighter pilots right these warriors they were out on the beach you know playing uh, sports like football okay and it was part of their training exercise but it was indirectly i mean was that have to do with flying planes or whatever okay no it had to do with with teamwork like you guys are a team now right so i know you all got your egos and you're the best pilot and you're the best gunner and everybody thinks they're the friggin best that's all very nice none of you can do this mission alone so you damn well better form a team and so they they played together 
<clears throat> and, and it was indirectly, uh, although very obviously, a, a purposeful thing for them to do. So when we talk about persistence and how to develop it, don't think that it has to be drudgery or so friggin' serious, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's serious. Your, your success depends on it. Uh, but can it not also have a bit of play, flippancy, games? Who doesn't like to participate in games? I like games, right? And we persist more when we're not only engaged with, with the purpose and the plans, but we're also engaged in, in, the, in the action of it, the doingness of it, the, the thrill of it, right? And there are people who have come together as allies, because we're talking about this fourth point now, creating a mastermind alliance, you know, and having, having allies. Uh, there are people who have accomplished seemingly impossible stuff when they, when they acted as an on-purpose group. And and it didn't even seem like, in other words, it, it felt like less effort than it would be to accomplish something smaller on your own. So to accomplish something big as a group felt like less effort than accomplishing something small on my own. That's the experience we can all have. Now, I know we've got a lot of people engaged in different uh, forms of businesses here. I'm going to ask you to, to see how you can uh, partner up. Uh, uh, accountability reps and, and, you know, friends that, you know, can, can say, you know, we're going to set these goals, action goals, right? I'm going to do this much work today. Okay. I'm going to do this much. We agree. Okay, fine. Let's do it. We don't want to let each other down. Right. So these sort of accountability partnerships and stuff like that, all of that is valid. As long as people are in harmony, uh, you know, with the purpose and the plans. Okay, now look, if you don't have this, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest that you seek it out. Uh, there are, you know, there are times when you, when you go it alone, you, you, you think you, you, you know, you do independent work and it's all, of course, important. Any group is going to be made up of, you know, powerful individuals. So go be a powerful individual. Just don't be an island with this stuff. I mean, if, if you believe anything that we just, you know, reread from this book, right? If you if you're in line with the idea that uh, you know Napoleon Hill actually knew something about how to develop persistence, and that these points will serve you, these four points: <clears throat> definite purpose, definite plans, mind closed tightly against negative influences, friendly alliance. Those are the four things. Do those four things, and become habitually persistent. Become persistent. It's who you become. It's not just what you do. It's who you are, right? And then you find that, you know what, the work got done and you didn't even, you never even had had the attention on bemoaning your lot or whatever else because it just got done. That's what, uh, you know, that's where I'm at right now with, with some projects that I've been, uh, that I've taken up, which at first I didn't have definite plans, didn't have definite purposes. And now I'm like, yeah, we're going forward on that. And you guys are going to be seeing more of that here in the very near future as we're launching some stuff next week. Um, and, and my ally on that, you know, first and foremost is my business partner and wife, right? So we've got some definite purposes, definite plans, and we're putting uh, that in place. And just, just yesterday, she originated, you know what, I think I'm going to do a media fast. I was like, oh, media fast, huh? That's not a new concept. That's number three, a mind closed tightly. Right. Keep letting that crap in. Be careful with that. Right. So she originated that. Anyway, guys, uh, I hope if nothing else, you, you got the, the idea that you do have a friendly alliance here. You do have allies here. And I know uh, preaching to the choir because here you are. But uh, hey, look, if you're seeing this on, on YouTube and, and you, you could use some allies, go check out jlsuccessmastermind.com. Get yourself a free two week membership and see if you fit in this group. I think you will, if you're inclined towards being in conversations like this <clears throat> and not just sitting around watching kitten videos on YouTube <laughs> or whatever. Anyway, uh, wow, I've, have I talked for 39 minutes? Did that just happen? 
It's all your fault, Catherine. All right, uh, the lines are open. Uh, we've got an intimate crowd here today. Anybody who'd like to talk, just uh, no need to raise hands. Just come on, open up your microphone. I see Journey says, love that movie. Yeah, I just experienced it last night. That was like, wow. With IMAX like screen and total thundering volume. My daughter was actually like this at some point. Lindsay, what do you think? I'm taking it they read, they did a remake of that movie. I'm, I'm not, I took a media fast six and a half years ago. Uh -huh. One week, never looked back. I was like, whoa. So, yeah, that's ignorance to not bliss, but it sure will save you, you know, cause a lot less anxiety. And um, anyway, but so I'm taking it they remade Top Gun. No, or, no, no, it's a sequel. Like, oh, okay. See, I didn't have no clue. I don't watch it on media, it's not my thing. Right. Um, so, so Top Gun was like 30, 40 years ago, whatever, right? Where Tom Cruise character Maverick was graduating from the Top Gun school and you know became a great uh, pilot, yeah. and now here he is being called back decades later to train the you know the youngins on this impossible <laughs> mission. You know. Okay. Yeah, I remember the original, but I didn't. I'd heard something about it. I was like, they must have remade it. But okay, good to know. Um, spectacular! Like holy crap, spectacular! Really, yeah. I, mean, I may have to break my two years i've not been yeah. to movies in two years well, no hold on entertainment movies and stuff that's you know uh, when we talk about media fast uh, well, I, I just don't go to the movies in general i mean i take my kids but well none of us have gone to the movies with with the age true. of covid and, and whatever right so that's true i haven't been since then so yeah you're right maybe that's why but yeah media fast is definitely when you turn on the news whatever you you start hearing sounds you didn't used to hear it's like ooh, put me on edge there i don't okay i said no i'm good mm -hmm. but, but it's great i can tell what, what bad weather's coming i don't need a meteorologist so anyway but um persistence is yes it's a must and the four rules you gotta go by those and yes if you're not in the jail success mastermind you need to try to do because there are friendly alliances in here great accountability and John's the man. He he put this group together and he was persistent and we've been here quite a while. And my goal is to be more persistent. My goal is to be, and when John looks up at, at persistent in the dictionary, because I'm sure he does every now and then, he's mm. gonna see my face. He's gonna be like, Jen, he's persistent. <laughs> there you are. No, but yeah, great topic. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. So glad you're here, my friend. And and look, you've seen the fruits of this, right? Yes. So, so the results are forthcoming. You, you've seen, uh, you know, major advancements and and more to come with yes. your your business efforts. Awesome stuff. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Journey Winter. What's up, Journey? I have the wrong name under there. It's no. Destiny. Hi, <laughs> Journey is Destiny. <laughs> I need to fix that. Um, but I guess my question is, what? do you suggest for an idling car? So indecision and those kind of pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we, we, have to, we have to start at the beginning, which is where you're going, right? So choosing a destination, here's the question. What do you want? <clears throat> which, you know, could be responded to with, you know, deer and headlights, I don't know. Okay, so that's an indicator or could be responded to with ambiguity. I'm, I'm vague. Well, I kind of, you know, eh, eh, all right. So what we want to do is we want to start by crystallizing, you know, some definite purpose. Uh, there's no, there's no point in moving, right. If you'd like to stop car, right. There's no point in overcoming inertia if we don't have a reason to, uh, like Solomon said, where there is no vision, the, the people perish. So, all right, well, what's your vision? Right now, sometimes destiny, and I know uh, you're you're among our newest members here. Okay, but sometimes we have uh, we have had that beaten out of us, right? So we go through life, we have wins and losses. Obviously, who doesn't, right? But if we fixate our attention on the losses and lower our standards, which is easy to do, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, then I guess you know it's not so bad, and we start equivocating and and justifying and. And uh, yeah, well, you know, and so what's the old saying? Good is the enemy of great, right? So yeah, you're surviving. Well done. That's that's nice. Okay, is that it? Is that is that that's like that's it? I hope not, right? So there's this thing which um, 
you, you could review, or you could just pull it up, you can uh, search for it online, called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. So Abraham Maslow came up with this idea that you've got a, a, a hierarchy of, of uh, needs or purposes, right? At the very base would be like survival, food, air, water, shelter, right? Then you've got <coughs> relationships and and to have an impact, to, to have meaning, right? And, and ultimately self-actualization, you know, uh, enlightenment, I suppose we could say. And so, and so if you look at, at that, uh, or you conjure up just your own sort of hierarchy, you could look and see, well, you know, uh, what is it that I would like in each of these areas? In fact, you could do this uh, without ha having any other prompts, right? You could just take a piece of paper and you can write out like different categories of of your life. So um, uh, business and, and money, right? Uh, relationships, uh, health and fitness, uh, spiritual, um, community contribution kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know, come up with whatever categories come to mind for you. And then just, uh, just kind of write out, you know, what would be the ideal scene in each of these areas. And then you can also write out, and here's where I'm at now. So now we, we get a bit more crystallization. We could see, all right, here's the gap between where I'm at and what I think this ideal situation would be. Uh, all right, great. And then we can start asking, here's the plans, right? What could I do? What's one thing? Maybe two things, maybe three, I don't know, but let's find at least one thing that I could do to move the needle from where I'm at to where I wanna go in this particular area of life. And then consistently do that. Now, you're, now you've overcome inertia, right? Now you're moving, right? So, so what do you want? Get a little bit unvague about that, right? What's the ideal look like? And where are we at now? See the contrast, see the difference. And then what's one thing that you could do, which if you did consistently, would get you closer to the ideal? Now you're not stopped. How does that sound, Destiny? It's, it sounds great. Um, and, and I have the idea of it and it's the action, but it's multiple avenues, um, which causes my, my, um, indecision. So one would be Amazon and what platforms to use, mm -hmm. but you really touched bases also with alliances and sorry, if I kind of ramble, um, there was a group that you suggested to add. I don't have very many alliances if that makes sense i'm kind of a lone wolf so okay not anymore welcome you're here okay so so um this is a, this is an interesting thing to do is uh well first of all keep showing up here you're, you're going to be meeting more people we got an intimate crowd here today uh, but uh, one of the things you could do is make known in our Facebook group or even in the chats here as you as you meet people, make known you know what you're working on, what your goals are. Look, you're not the only Amazon person here, and I don't know if you're are you pursuing that now? Is that like your your main enterprise is like Amazon, like you're sourcing products or like what are you doing? So this is it. As of right now, I need to take action. I have some ideas. Um, one being a product line. I just don't want to. I'm a little unclear on the the legal aspect and if amazon will let me use one product um with amazon but also another platform and legal aspect if it should all be under one umbrella versus multiple businesses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah adrian is a good ally to have in that area adrian garner runs our um life and business tools. And he knows a lot about contracting and legal. Uh, it sounds like what you're doing is, is just you're originating a product and you'd like to, you know, offer it on multiple platforms. Yeah, of course, do whatever you want with that. In fact, I would say never be pigeonholed into just one. One is a dangerous number in business, right? So you want to definitely diversify and have multiple avenues, multiple, you know, ways that people can click the buy button. <clears throat> um, you know what we can uh we can get uh we could take that up we could also you know what we've got a full archive destiny and I, again i know you're new here uh but we've got a full archive in the member site on the recordings e-commerce work group so there are i don't know countless and, and they're all they're all listed by the by topic okay so what was discussed okay but we've got countless episodes of that in the archive 
uh, and a lot of it deals directly with Amazon, Etsy, Shopify, sourcing products and 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 uh, the legal and international aspects of that. We got Brits who sat in on that and gave their advice and you're going to find a wealth of stuff in there. And if there's anything specific you want to take up uh, directly, go ahead and email my office and we can always put something else on the calendar like like a, a special event, right? Like I did I did a couple events just for like people that wanted to to get better with with sales and, and communication skills. And that's all in the archive as well, right? Like here's how I, I've closed like over hundred million dollars with the business online, right? So we got different specialists in different areas and you're gonna find, you're gonna find a lot of food for action here. So anyway, thank you, Destiny, for being thank here. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, start there's with that so purpose though. Get really clear on that, okay? Yeah, there's so much information on there and communication skills, you really hit point on that. So I will look at there. But it's overwhelming for me. I don't know where to start. You just think I should just pick one and go. Kind of where I'm at. <laughs> you know, that's and and that's one of the, the I'd say the the shortcomings of of the platform that we have here is like here's everything. Enjoy, right? Whoa. Okay. So so um, we actually have an assistant who's been working on categorizing and making searchable down to the words that were said throughout each video into a into a, um, a whole new member site that we're going to be uh, launching where you could actually type words like uh, Facebook marketing or um, you know closing sales or, or stuff like that and here's every piece referenced and cross-referenced and where you're going to find it at 15 minutes into that video here's the part on that so um, understand this is not this is not like a course so there's nothing linear about what we do here it's it's kind of like what I did this morning. I went to the gym. I clicked play on one of the audio books that was in my in my phone and started listening and and wound up getting what at this point a, a full hour's uh, dissertation on it. So so it's a definitely a nonlinear approach, but I'll tell you what, um, it's workable because the the um, what I've gotten through participating in in you know groups and discussions like this without any like forethought about like what the content was going to be, it has, it has transformed my life over the decades. And so the personal development aspect of all this, which you're going to get just through osmosis and just through showing up, uh, that imbues all the other, let's say more operational or, you know, uh, cerebral activities with a different quality. In other words, who shows up, the destiny who shows up is an empowered one. And as an optimized one, and then yeah, go apply that to whatever you want. Amazon, or you know, we got people doing shopping clubs here. We got people engaged in all kinds of stuff, um, but doing that, you know, as the best version of you, right? So there's really no linear approach to that, and I never know what it's going to be, you know, until until I I experience it. Like man, there's the reminder that I needed, right? Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I am so happy to be here and I'm honored to be with all of you guys and I'm excited and there will be days I can't show up, but I'll, I'll do to work or other life, but I will, I, I'm just excited to be here. More I'm, than so, any, I'm so glad you're here. No words. <laughs> Thank you, Destiny. So glad you're here, my friend. Glad you found us. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, well, let's go ahead and uh, I guess uh, there's no other hot mics. We'll go ahead and wrap up for today. Uh, I'm going to be back here with you tomorrow, and we're going to have a fun conversation. We're also going to have Be Heard tomorrow, which is where we can get together and talk about whatever you want to talk about, and I get to listen. Uh, so I'll see you guys again uh, there real soon. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. No, nope, everything else is good. All right, my friends, make it a great day. You absolutely deserve it. We'll see you again.